Hey there, guys. So I took a look at Black Mesa before, and what I found was that it, it really is one of the heaviest source games I've ever played. Most source games on these low power APUs actually end up running at pretty much maximum settings pretty much all the time. And this was one of the few games that is actually built on the source engine that even at the lowest graphics settings, you get 1% lows that aren't exactly at a range where you would expect them to be. So I was curious if DXVK, the translation layer that lets you essentially translate whatever DirectX you your game is running at, usually working better with the older DirectXs like DirectX 9 and 10 over to Vulkan to see if that can actually improve the performance in the game itself. Now the game really mostly struggles in terms of 1% lows. The averages are usually at a pretty reasonable rate, though again it is pretty surprising that a source game is running so heavily that you have to use the lowest in-game graphics settings. Now the lowest quality preset in this game doesn't turn everything to the absolute lowest, but a lot of the settings that are left slightly higher are usually the settings that are the least demanding. So at the potato quality settings, you can see here it running with DirectX 9 and the level of performance that we're getting is pretty decent. But again, for being a source game, it's really surprising what's going on here. And really with the source engine, I'm kind of just used to 1% lows being closer to around 100 FPS than anywhere below 60. So if we just want run through this level a bit just to see what the overall performance is going to be like. We can actually start to compare it with the Vulkan API. Now, now, keep in mind that this is a translation layer, which means that there is some performance overhead that's happening there. If you want to maximize the performance that DXVK will give you, you pretty much have to use Linux. And I would recommend just using Linux in general if you're looking to play titles like this and older AAA titles because of the fact that it is much easier to implement and the performance is going to be usually better just because of the fact that it doesn't have to do the same kind of workarounds that the Windows version has to do. But you can see here that in a lot of the situations that we get into here, the 1% lows do actually get to almost 30 FPS, which is again, very shocking to see for the source engine. In general, it's not an unplayable experience. It's just surprisingly bad. Now that doesn't mean that it is actually an unplayable experience. It just means that it is not as performant as you would expect it to be. So we'll jump over now to DXVK to see what the overall performance ends up being like. Now keep in mind, once you switch over to using Vulkan, you do actually need to let the shaders cache. So I ran through this level already once before and I'm just going through it again with hopefully everything already being cached in and from the very beginning we see that the overall level of performance that we're getting isn't too drastically different and I have to admit that at the beginning of all of this I was kind of disappointed because I was hoping to see better results than this but as I progressed throughout the mission I did notice that the overall 1% lows and sometimes even the averages were slightly higher than where we were at with just direct x9 but unfortunately it really wasn't enough to push the game to have 1% lows that are above 60, which is really what I was hoping to see just because the overall experience in this is brought down a little bit by those 1% lows. But in general, it isn't dipping as low as it was before, where a lot of the times we were getting 1% lows that were getting close to the mid to low 30s. Most of the time, the 1% lows now stuck around a 40 FPS range. So there is an improvement there, though. It's nothing drastic. Now, I've mentioned before that I do plan on doing Linux testing at some point soon, and this is one of those games where I'm very curious to see what Linux is actually going to end up doing for us because I'm very fascinated by a source game that is just this heavy and it's a source game that is made in the traditional sense. It's not like a heavily modified one like Apex Legends or Titanfall 2 with Apex really being the heaviest source game that I've ever played. This ranking pretty close to it though in the sense that it isn't as visually detailed as Apex Legends can be and yet our 1% lows still are not at a 60 FPS range and we're not really even getting an FPS average that is that much higher than 60. So in general, it is interesting to see there isn't going to be that drastic of a difference overall in the performance here, though. If you look at the frame time charts, they do stay a little bit flatter. But in a lot of situations, it isn't going to give you anything that is going to be so drastically different that you're probably going to notice it. I think if you had people do side by side comparisons between the two, they would probably struggle to identify which is which. So while there are some gains here and there, it's nothing drastic and it's not, not going to be anything groundbreaking. It's not going to change your overall experience in this game itself. It mostly just levels off the areas where you would normally see a slight dip. They don't happen really as frequently and anytime that there would be something that would be considered a dip, it usually recovers from it significantly quicker. But the gains themselves are really almost practically within margin of error, though you really have to pay attention to the frame time charts to actually see what the difference actually ends up being. But here you can see them running side by side each other later on in the same level. And you can see that the overall 
overall performance is not going to be drastically different. In general, I would say that there is no real meaningful gain to be had here. That said, though, if you do pay attention to the frame time charts, you can see there are slight differences between the two. And in general, the Vulcan version does have slightly higher 1% lows that stay throughout the entirety of the run. Of course, it isn't a complete apples to apples comparison because of the fact that since this isn't a set built in benchmark, there are going to be slight variances between each run. But in general, the overall performance does seem to actually be slightly better on the Vulcan version, but again, nothing drastic. So you can make the decision for yourself on whether or not it's even worth going through the effort of actually setting this up. There were certain things that needed to be changed just to get Vulcan to actually work on here because of the fact that while the game itself actually runs on DirectX 9, the UI, which was updated in the game itself to be a little bit fancier, a little bit nicer. I personally am a fan of it in comparison to the older Source Engine UI that runs on DirectX 11. And at least according to the developers of DXVK, the way that it's implemented it is done in such a way that DXVK will pretty much never work with it, at least on Windows. This is not a problem that exists on Linux, but it is a problem that exists on specifically the Windows version. So what you have to do is set a launch parameter to actually use the old UI. And I'll actually leave in the description the exact launch parameter that you need to set if you actually try to use this. Now, it's not a complete deal breaker or anything like that. It's just one of those things where the nicer UI is essentially just going to be out of the question for you. And considering that the performance gains that we're seeing here aren't exactly drastic, I'm not 100% sure if it's even worth going through the effort of all of that. But that's up to you to decide. Again, if you're on an older system than this, say a 2000 or 3000 series APU, and you're a little bit struggling to keep a consistent level of performance, it might be worthwhile for you to actually go through the effort of all that. But it really all just depends on you. So anyways, I hope you found this quick look at DXVK running with Black Mesa to be interesting, useful, or entertaining. It definitely reveals that DXVK is not a magic bullet that is going to fix all of your problems with older titles or older APIs rather. So it is one of those things where you should go through the effort of trial and error, but I can completely understand if that's just not something you're willing to do because at the end of the day, you mostly just care about playing games. But I appreciate you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, memberships are enabled and you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month and that is greatly appreciated. You can also support the channel by checking out the Amazon affiliate links down below as those greatly help the channel to get more equipment for testing. I would definitely like to eventually be able to get myself some RDNA based iGPUs to actually do some testing, especially with things like the XVK. So if you'd like to support on that, you can always become a member or you can just use those Amazon affiliate links. It's no cost to you and it just helps the channel directly. So if there was anything that you were looking to get on Amazon anyway, you can just use that link and help support the channel. But anyways, I will catch you in the next one.